Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode or version or rendition or however you want to call this. I guess it's an episode. We do this every week. It's kind of like episodes. Uh, it's Cellar Chats. My name's Chris. We're in the cellar here at Second Glass and we are talking the weekly wine flights and it is Beaujolais week. Now, most of you may not know that that is an actual full-on week. Officially, probably not a full week, but the Thursday before Thanksgiving, the which is technically, I think, what is it, the third Thursday, second Thursday of the month is known as Beaujolais Day. Now, typically, we're, you know, for a long time, people would refer to it as Beaujolais Nouveau Day. That's when the Nouveau gets released. So Thursday, when you're hitting your Harris Teeter or your food line, you are going to see stacks upon stacks of George de Boeuf Beaujolais, um, and it will be everywhere. But we are not talking Beaujolais Nouveau. We are talking... Beaujolais proper. What does that mean? What's the difference? So Beaujolais Nouveau is exactly that. Fresh, new Beaujolais. So it is fermented very quickly. It is basically, once fermentation is done, it's bottled, put cork in it, put a label on it, they ship it out, they drink it. And in Beaujolais, they have a big celebration. The wine is meant to celebrate the end of harvest. Um, in the 80s, there was a huge kind of like Marketing push primarily from George de Boeuf um, to like kind of bring this tr this kind of uh, tradition of celebrating Nouveau Day to the Americas. It did wonders for them up front, um, but on the back end, it kind of ruined Beaujolais for a long time. But things have changed. Beaujolais is hip. It's cool. It's fun. I mean, obviously, I'm drinking it, and I, apparently, I'm a hipster, so I must be into it. Um, but we are talking Beaujolais that is aged and treated like any other wine. It is not nouveau, it's not super fresh. Um, it still has that like crisp, crunchy red fruit character, but you know, these can be just as serious as really great Burgundy, red Burgundy, which is just to the north. Beaujolais technically a little bit part of, uh, it's technically part of Burgundy, although very few people refer to it that way, mostly because it really is its own thing and it kind of stands out. I mean, it's, to me, it's as, it's like a part of Burgundy the way Chablis is a part of Burgundy. Yes, it is part of Burgundy, but it is so distinct from the rest of Burgundy that it really is its own thing. So um, we are going to be doing a really fun lineup. We're going to go with just Appalachian level Beaujolais. We're going to go with a Beaujolais Village, and then we're going to finish with a Cru. What does that mean? A Cru Beaujolais is essentially a specific little like area within Beaujolais, kind of like the villages of Burgundy or the different like places in Napa. So if you're in Napa, like Oakville or Stag's Leap District, something of that nature, the crews of Beaujolais are the same kind of thing. So starting out with Domaine St. Cyr. This is their La Galoche Beaujolais, just a little entry level everyday drinker. Uh, the St. Cyr family or the Cyr family is located in the south, they're actually in the far, far south where there are no crews, um, but they have a long time belief that this ha is an amazing place with great terroir and it is able to create a mid, like really top notch Beaujolais, even though they don't have a crew designation. Um, to be clear, most of the crews are in the northern part, closer to Burgundy. Um, but this is through the lineup, it's kind of going to go like. Again, light and fresh. None of these are going to be super heavy, but they're going to get more complex and have more characteristics going on. What I really like about the Saint Cyr is that it is everything I think you would expect from a good drinking Beaujolais. It is crunchy red fruits, a little bit of spice, really lively, very low tannins, um, and you can pretty much chug it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, again, raspberry, a little bit of spice, a little bit of dried herbs. Mm, I mean, look at that color. Lots of freshness, lots of mineral character to this wine. Which brings me to the other thing that people always think of when they think Beaujolais. Thanksgiving. There's a good reason. The, like, again, red fruit, kind of cranberry, pomegranate, um, a little bit of, like, red raspberry fruit character. That acidity and freshness can carry you through a meal from start to finish. It keeps you refreshed because, let's be honest... Thanksgiving is a very heavy meal, and you last thing you want is a heavy wine to go with those heavy foods. You want something that's gonna kind of lift you up and make you feel light on your feet, while also, you know, 
you know, basically giving you a little bit of an alcohol injection as you're hanging out with your family, because we all know how that can be. That's spectacular. Again, Domain St. Cyr. Wow. Really pretty, like, kind of like black peppercorn, maybe like a black green peppercorn mix on the finish. That was great. Uh, Domain St. Cyr, their La Galoche Beaujolais. That is Appalachian level. Now we're going to move into a step up. So this is Domain Chapelle Beaujolais Village. Um, this comes from actually a, a small little area that they're working very hard to make the next crew of Beaujolais um, called, I'm going to butcher the name, but it's a Lantigone. I, I'm pretty sure that's not how you pronounce it, but uh, maybe I'll put it in the show notes um, how, to spell, how it's spelled. But so Domaine Chappelle, a really cool couple, um, husband and wife, David, David Chappelle, not, not the comedian, and Michelle Smith Chappelle. Um, David grew up in Beaujolais. His father ran some really amazing restaurants. Um, he has, Beaujolais is in his veins. Um, and Michelle grew up in the U.S., uh, worked at some incredible restaurants in New York City, which is actually where she met David. Um, he was there working as a sommelier. You know, they got to chatting, and she had actually, I think, if I remember correctly, the story goes, she had met him on a trip. She'd gone to Beaujolais and had was visiting a really incredible, probably one of the most famous producers, um, the LaPierre family. And when she was there, she was supposed to meet with Mathieu, uh, who is now head of the LaPierre. Um, Marcel passed away several years ago. Um, and anyways, at the time, Mathieu was supposed to be there, but... He got cut up with an appointment and he called his like seller hand to help show her around the vineyards because she was there on a trip with a group of people and it happened to be David Chappelle who was very good friends with Matthew. They'd grown up together. So fast forward, he moves over to the US, romance ensues. They decide to move back to Beaujolais and start their own domain. They actually made their first ones at um, the LaPierre facility um, and they have become you know, very much the new up and coming darlings of Beaujolais. They're pretty much friends with everyone that you would ever want to drink wine from. Um, all the greats. They're well loved from every pretty, pretty much every person who is interested in Beaujolais, loves Beaujolais or reviews Beaujolais is a fan of these guys. They're just sweet, sweet people, hardworking, you know, boots on the ground, hands in the dirt, and they make delicious wine. So this is their Lantigny. Again, Beaujolais Village, and they're kind of like, it's a little bit more wild, a little more um, exotic than I think, um, than like the La Galoche is. Mm. Oh, wow, excellent. So where the La Galoche is very much, lots of very crunchy, bright red fruit. Again, I say that pomegranate, cranberry. It's very fruit driven. There's a little bit of that like peppery spice on the back end. The Chappelle is still has that crunchy fruit, but it has a little bit more of a herbaceous, savory, exotic side to it, which gives it just a little more complexity, very lifted. Um, I'd say the minerality is a little, a little more subtle. There's like a bright line of uh, acidity and freshness that I kind of link with minerality in the La Galoche. Whereas with this one, again, it's just a little more, I don't know how else to say, wild. It's so good. It's so amazing. I just, again, I want to chug this wine. <clears throat> wow. Spectacular. Again, Domaine Chappelle, their Beaujolais Village. Really great stuff. And then we're moving into a wine that I'm not super familiar with, but I am really excited to try it for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> so this is Chateau du Moulin Avant. This is their Moulin Avant Couvent de Thorins. My French is really bad, so I could be butchering the crap out of that. So what's, there's a couple of things that are fun about this. Um, this estate dates back, well, it can trace its lineage and history of the chateau back to basically the 1700s. I mean, I, I can't even trace back my heritage that long, let alone a wine's heritage. Um... And the Moulin Avant region, AOC, was one of the first AOCs to be given AOC status. That's the 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the government body who dictates a specific region as being able to like, essentially be able to list it as Moulin Avant. So where this is Beaujolais, it's just listed as Beaujolais. That's because it doesn't fall within the requirements for it to be a village level Beaujolais. The Chapelle falls within the requirements of being village, means the vineyards are located in an area that is deemed a little bit higher quality, the fruit is better, and the wine drinks the way that the governing body dis dictates qualifies for a village level. Whereas this all comes from Moulin Avant, um, which is the most northerly region of Beaujolais, and it falls within all of the things for it to be able to be labeled as Moulin Avant. So the other thing I like about this, other than the history and the rambling I just had, is that you just don't see a lot of Moulin Avant around. Um, I think it's, I mean, there's a few crews that don't get nearly as much love. I mean, I'd say between Morgon, Fleury, and maybe Sheena and Renier, those, those would probably be the most common four crews. Um, to be clear, there are 10 crews, 11 maybe. Um, I think they just changed it. There might be 11 now. Anyways. Um, but seeing how this is one of this is the oldest crew, one of the oldest AOCs in France for red wine and for Gamay, um, you just don't see a lot of it, and I think it gets overlooked. It definitely is the most structured and most like able to age style because again, you know we're we're a little bit further north, we're a little closer to Beaujolais. The climate makes a little more sense. The soil makes more sense. Wow, that is. So this, I've not had this wine before. So the, the nose is so incredible. So this all comes from, I think, 40-year-old vines. Whereas I think most of the, the Galoche and the Beaujolais Village from Chapelle, I think those are probably closer to 15 to 20-year-old vines. So much older vine pro, um, older vines here. Interestingly, it's done entirely in stainless steel, which I was not expecting. It's much darker. You can feel a sense of like brooding broader shoulders, even on the nose. More like dark cherry, black cherry, blackberry kind of characteristics. Wow. Yeah. Definitely more leaning into that. A lot more tannins, a lot more structure. Um, more of that dark cherry, almost like plum character. I mean, the color is translucent, absolutely gorgeous. The mouthfeel is really pretty. But when put up against the first two, this one definitely sings more structured, more intense, a little more serious, for lack of a better way of describing that. And again, like we're always looking to do, it's a really nice kind of like transition from just crunchy, vibrant, and fresh with the really beautiful Domaine St. Cyr Galoche Beaujolais. Moving in a little bit more serious, still keeping that like refreshing vibe. Kind of makes you want to drink it all day long, serve it a little chilled, the Chapelle Beaujolais Village. And then really ending on the high note, a structured, more serious bottling that certainly could lay down for longer, but I'll be honest, the way it's drinking right now, I don't want to wait any longer. The Chateau du Moulin Avant, the Couvent de Thorin's 2019. Wow, that was a mouthful. My French, I got to work on that. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be safe out there. Come have some flights. Drink Beaujolais. Hang out with your friends. Support local. And get prepared for the holiday season. Because whether you like it or not, it is upon us. I'll see you next week. Actually, no. I won't see you next week. I will see you in two weeks. We are taking next week off as it is Thanksgiving week. So we will be taking the next week off and we'll see you the last week of November. Be safe. Bye.